DBT is a comprehensive therapy to improve emotion regulation for people who struggle with frequent intense emotions, especially when their emotions create impulsive behaviors with big consequences. In DBT, we use this emotion diagram to help you figure out how emotions work and what you can do to change them. Emotions are complex reactions that are influenced by many factors. And because we cannot directly change our internal experiences of emotion, we change them by changing the other components. We cannot change our emotions using willpower, even when we desperately want to. Emotions are made up of internal and external reactions. The internal includes biological changes in our brain and in our bodies, including the fight or flight response, like changes in our heart rate and blood pressure, and other feelings and sensations we notice internally. Other than drugs and alcohol, there are only a few things we can do to quickly shift our emotion physiology, included in the DBT tip skills. Dunking our face in really cold water, intense physical exercise, slow paced breathing, and progressive relaxation. Sometimes we can sleep to shift our physiology. The external includes facial expressions, body posture, what we say, and what we do. Emotions commonly make us leave or avoid a threatening situation, attack, seek help, or try to solve a problem. Emotions are always elicited by prompting events, sometimes called triggers even though it is often difficult to discover what exactly elicited them. Most of the time emotions are elicited by external events. Our emotions are sometimes reactions to internal experiences such as memories, physical sensations in our bodies, thoughts, dreams, or reactions to other emotions. And those internal experiences are usually elicited by external events. Therefore, it's important to try to identify those external events because we can sometimes change the emotions by changing those situations in our lives or change our reactions to those situations. Many of the situations involve problems with our relationships, our work, our finances, or lack of meaning in life. We improve our emotions by using interpersonal effectiveness skills to get more of what we need from others and reduce conflict. And we use skills to chip away at solving or minimizing the impact of other problems. There are also skills for suffering less from your life problems while you're waiting for them to improve. In the short term, when there's nothing you can do in a specific situation, you can use distraction to change your emotions by turning your attention away from upsetting prompting events and then later work on solving the problem when the opportunity arises. There are also acceptance skills that help you tolerate problems while you're also actively working to solve them. Quite often, our reactions are in proportion to the prompting events. Bigger events, those that are objectively more threatening, elicit larger emotional reactions. And those that are objectively smaller, elicit smaller emotions. This ferocious dog will generally elicit more fear than the smaller dog. However, some people are more sensitive to certain prompting events. They have larger reactions than others, like this person with a dog phobia, compared to this person without. What makes us sensitive to prompting events includes events from the distant past, like the dog phobic who was bitten as a child, or who knew somebody who was bitten, or events from the recent past, like having recently heard a news story of a dog attack. History of trauma is often a major source of emotional reactivity. We're more likely to be emotionally sensitive when we're vulnerable from our biology, including when we have not had adequate sleep or are otherwise exhausted, are hungry or inadequately nourished, have been physically ill or in prolonged pain, or have had too many recent stressful events. The most important way to improve emotional resiliency, reduce our vulnerability, is to do the hard work of building a life worth living, using skills to gradually improve relationships, build into our lives more meaningful work and play, live according to our values, and find ways to contribute. Similarly, increasing short-term pleasant events is very helpful. When there are more positives, the negatives don't bother us as much. We also improve emotional resiliency by taking care of our bodies, consistent adequate sleep, 
consistent healthy eating, regular exercise, and regular practice of slow paced breathing or relaxation exercises. You can also improve emotional resiliency by doing trauma therapy, and you can desensitize to many of your triggers. Exposure therapy is one of our most powerful strategies for reducing the power of emotion triggers. One common reason why we have strong emotion reactions is because our negative thoughts magnify our reactions beyond the objective facts of the situation. And we take our thoughts literally. Often we face a truly unpleasant or stressful situation and we have incomplete information and our minds rush to negative interpretations judgments, or negative assumptions about others' thoughts and feelings, which makes the emotional distress much more intense. Sometimes our emotions are entirely false alarms, sometimes because we get inaccurate or misleading information. Here's an example. In 2017, President Trump exchanged threats with North Korea that made many people fear nuclear war. Several months later, residents of Hawaii received this catastrophic message on their phones. People felt panic and grief as they said what they thought were their final goodbyes to loved ones. Announcements 38 minutes later clarified that it was a false alarm due to an employee pressing a wrong button. Finding the facts brought great relief. Another example of inaccurate thoughts creating an emotion false alarm is when I was shopping at this department store with my one-year-old daughter a number of years ago. She was behind me as I was looking at an item that I was considering buying. And when I eventually turned around, I didn't see her anywhere around. After I looked down the next couple of aisles, I had this image in my mind that she was abducted. And I thought that I would never see her again. I ran to the front of the store and called out to the employees, help me, somebody took my daughter. Within a few minutes they found her, having crawled behind some boxes a few feet from where I had originally been standing. I felt so relieved. I felt intense fear and sadness in response to the thoughts and images in my mind, even though there was objectively no problem in the situation. Again, finding the facts brought great relief. We can change our emotional reactions by slowing down our process of reacting, gathering more information, and changing our interpretations, beliefs, and assumptions to match the facts. Many people have trouble distinguishing facts from interpretations and judgments. Mindfulness skills help you see that many of your thoughts do not reflect facts, which means you will be freed up to seek other ways of making sense of the things that bother you. You can sometimes then neutralize the negative thoughts by adding other thoughts like, my behavior was actually very normal, and many people like me, things of that sort. You have to be really careful though about trying to push in new thoughts to force out threatening thoughts, which only gives those negative thoughts more power. By using mindfulness to unglue from the negative thoughts, you let them float away, and that takes away some of their power which means you're able to react to just the facts of your unpleasant situation and therefore decrease your emotional suffering. Some people hold on to and magnify non-acceptance thoughts like, this shouldn't have happened, and I can't stand this. You'll suffer much less if instead you acknowledge, it did happen. It makes sense that it happened. There were causes. And now I'll work to change it or offset the damage, or tolerate it and live my life. Similarly, if you repeat, no, he didn't, he shouldn't have done that. Well, yes, he did. And if you think about it, it makes sense that it happened, and I'll get through this. These acceptance skills will help you suffer less from your adversities. The large box in the middle shows that the internal experience of emotion physiology, feelings, and urges, causes emotion behaviors, and also that emotional behaviors influence internal emotional experiences. We act how we feel, and we feel how we act. Our emotions create facial expressions, and our face tells our brain what to feel. 
Studies have shown that frowning during unpleasant procedures intensifies pain experiences, and frowning worsens depression. The DBT Half Smile skill is based on the research that smiling has a big positive impact on our emotions, including reducing stress hormones. Smiling also reduces suffering from physical pain. Sometimes our brain translates this as, I smile so I must be happy. At other times, I smile so I must be tolerating this experience, which is why this strategy works so effectively for distance runners. Similarly, if we breathe and hold our bodies like a person who is upset or unable to tolerate a situation, then that will be our reality. Feeling anxious or upset makes us breathe faster and tense our bodies. And it's also true that fast breathing and muscle tension increases our distress. When we're emotionally regulated, we breathe slowly and smoothly and our muscles loosen. And breathing slowly and relaxing our muscles helps regulate our emotions. These are the skills of pace breathing and progressive relaxation. Similarly, lack of confidence shows in closed up and hunched over body postures like these. And those postures maintain our low confidence. Studies have proven that we build confidence and better tolerate stress when we open up our hands and body posture, which is the basis for the DBT skill of willing hands. When a person is clinically depressed, they have strong and persistent negative thoughts that they are horrible and their life is horrible and that none of it will ever improve, which makes them feel sad, anxious, ashamed, irritable, and lethargic. Of course, these thoughts and feelings make them isolate, avoid, and give up. And it's also true that these behaviors make them feel even more depressed overall as well as have more frequent and powerful self-critical and hopeless thinking. Similarly, when a person has an anxiety disorder, they excessively avoid many things they fear, and those avoidance behaviors keep their fears intact. When a person has an anger problem, physically destroying things and screaming makes their anger problem worse. When a person with excessive shame punishes themselves, their self-hatred problem increases further. Essentially, the person has an abundance of practice acting depressed, acting fearful, hating themselves, or acting angry. So those reactions become even stronger in the future, even if in the short term those emotional behaviors bring some sense of relief. When you're depressed, acting like a non-depressed person helps reduce depression, eventually. When you're excessively afraid of things, consistently approaching what you feel like avoiding will reduce your fear. Acting kind, gentle, and empathetic towards a person will reduce your anger. Acting confident will increase your feelings of confidence. Research shows that behavior change is one of the most powerful ways to improve how we think and feel. When your emotional reactions do not fit the situation, are excessive, or are not effective. When that's true, the first step is to not act on your emotions and urges. By using skills like postponing the behavior for a specific amount of time, like 10 minutes, while you throw yourself into a different activity, pros and cons, remembering the negative consequences of the emotion behaviors, or mindfulness skills like stop, ride the emotion wave, or urge surfing. You prefer to prevent or reduce the emotion or urge when possible, but when that hasn't worked, you use skills for those feelings to not control your behavior so that you don't make things worse. The second step is to activate opposite behaviors. When we do this, our emotions improve because we either end up solving some of the problem or we desensitize to our trigger, which we call exposure therapy. Exposure is one of the most powerful strategies for reducing the power of emotion triggers. Ask your therapist about how you can use it to help you. Our highest level of suffering occurs when we react to our reactions, get upset about being upset, panic about panicking. Everyone's had the experience of feeling sad, and then all we can think about is our sad memories, and then we start playing sad music that makes us feel even more sad. 
We say emotions love themselves. The most difficult is when we judge our emotions, like when we feel ashamed about feeling sad, afraid, or angry, and then forcefully suppress or avoid those internal experiences, mental images, and memories. Refusing to have emotions will ensure that overall they will occur much more often and be harder for us to tolerate. Here's an example of how it works. Something happened that made this person feel sad. Then this person reacted to the sad feelings, reacted to crying, and the idea of being sad. And all this became the second prompting event that elicited even more sadness and other emotions, which brought this person's suffering to the highest possible level. The shame and anger are the secondary emotions here, and the sadness is the primary emotion. This person felt shame and anger about feeling sad. The shame was a way to avoid the sadness, and the anger was a way to avoid the sadness and the shame. And judgmental and intolerance thoughts further magnified the shame and anger. All this keeps the person unable to handle sadness. Many DBT skills help create the ability to accept and tolerate primary emotions. For example, using mindfulness to pay attention to and allow primary emotions to flow through helps prevent the shift to secondary emotions and proves to the person that they can handle the emotions without having to escape. Practicing tolerating emotions creates the ability to tolerate emotions. I hope this video helps you see the possibilities for DBT to help you with your emotions. I hope you give DBT a try.